Good evening everyone. My name is Dimpi Sharma, Marketing Manager for Global Solution and Compliance Private Limited. The topic that we are going to discuss today is BIS registration for aluminium products. To have this discussion in detail, we have Mr. Atul Agarwal, the Head of Operations for Global Solution and Compliance Private Limited who has an experience of helping 500 plus Indian and foreign manufacturers for BIS registration under ISI scheme of BIS. So before moving on to the main discussion, uh, could you please give us an overview on how you found your way to Global Solution and the hardships that you've encountered on the way? Very good evening everyone. Thank you Dimpy for this beautiful introduction. In simpler terms, Global Solution is a dream seen by my brother Mr. Manish Agarwal in year 1997 of making a one roof consulting window for all import and manufacturing related licenses. Stepping forward in year 2019, he set up his own recycling unit by the name of Global Waste Solution where we recycle for brands like Paytm, Foxconn, Rappi Pay, Lavaza and much more. Taking his legacy forward, today we stand out as the leading consultant for licenses such as BIS, EPR, DGFT, MOEF, WPC, LMPC and much more. That was a great introduction. Ministries and Departments So let's move on to the topic that we are here for today. So what is precisely BIS registration for aluminium products? Uh, please uh, share your knowledge with the viewers about the same. So firstly, I would like to convey that BIS is a standardization body that is governed by Ministry of Consumer Affairs. Hence, there are other ministries involved which publishes gadget notification termed as QCOs which implements BIS registration on specific products. To be more precise about aluminium, Ministry of Mines and DPIT issued QCOs which mandated BIS registration on 25 plus aluminium products. We greatly appreciate your guidance on BIS and briefing on the ministries involved. So, uh, before getting into the detailed discussion on aluminium products and quality control orders, I want you to answer one of the viewer's doubts that what is the difference between BIS and ISI? Yes, it is a doubt of a lot of manufacturers and importers. So, as I told you, BIS stands for Bureau of Indian Standards, that is a government body which is responsible for issuing standardization marks such as hallmark that is applicable on jewelries, CLS mark that is applicable on electronic products and ISM mark that is applicable on, a, uh, on 1300 products we can say both domestic and industrial. In a nutshell we can conclude that BIS is a government department that is responsible for issuing ISM mark license on our various products. Aluminium products and implementation dates. As you highlighted us on the term QCOs, uh, could you please help us out with a brief on major QCOs and also inform our viewers about their date of implementation? Short MP. So there are five plus QCOs which mandates BIS on aluminium products, but today we'll be discussing about three major QCOs issued by uh, Ministry of Mines and DPIT. So firstly, we start with aluminium and aluminium alloy quality control order. So this QCO was issued by Ministry of Mines and it covers five types of, we can say, raw form of aluminium that includes aluminium ingots and castings for general purpose engineering, for remelting specifications and for electrical specifications. So this QCO was supposed to be implemented by 30th of November 2023 but was further extended to 1st of June 2024. Secondly, we come to aluminium and aluminium alloy products quality control order that was issued by DPIIT which comes under the Ministry of Commerce and Industries. This QCO covers 17 products classified as stage 2 of aluminium products such as aluminium extrusions both hollow and solid used for various applications such as general purpose engineering, electrical applications and irrigation purposes. Again, this QCO was supposed to be implemented from 25th of March 2024 but was further extended to 26th of September for medium and large units 
26th of December for small units and lastly 26th of March 2025 for micro units. Thirdly, we come to cookware and utensils quality control order. It is again issued by DPIID and covers five types of cookwares and utensils that can be termed as end term consumer products. So this QCO includes stainless steel cookwares, wrought aluminium utensils, stainless steel sinks, sanitary cans for food and beverages and lastly aluminium cans for beverages. So coming to its implementation, this QCO was again supposed to be implemented from 9th of February 2024 but was further extended to 1st of September 2024 for medium and large units and 1st of December 2024 and 1st of March 2025 for small and micro units respectively. BIS certification process for aluminium products. Thank you Atul for sharing such useful information. Hence, uh, this section was all about aluminium products that are covered by BIS. Uh, next, let us discuss the method of obtaining a BIS license. So, Atul, could you please uh, tell us the procedure for taking a BIS license, uh, starting from setting up in-house laboratory and how to get a BIS license and after getting the license, what else has to be done to remain compliant with the BIS license? So, DIMPI, we can secure the BIS license in two ways. First is the simplified procedure and second is the normal procedure. But a lot of aluminium products are already being mandated by BIS under simplified procedure. So let us discuss about the simplified procedure first and then I can tell you the difference between simplified procedure and normal procedure. So under simplified procedure, our first course of action is to set up an in-house laboratory as per the BIS requirements. Once we are ready with the in-house laboratory, we can group our products as per the grouping guidelines issued by BIS and then those products will be sent to a BIS approved laboratory for the testing specifications. Parallelly, we can, we can be ready with a set of required documents that are required for the BIS application. Once we are ready with the test report and the required documents, we can file an application in the BIS department. After filing of our application with the required fees, a dealing officer will be appointed by BIS who will be responsible for scrutiny of our application. Once he finds our application satisfactory, he marks our application as recorded. After recording of our application, an inspecting officer is assigned by the BIS who will be responsible for carrying out a physical inspection at a premises. At the day of inspection, his first course of action will be to verify our complete manufacturing process along with the necessary machineries and the plant layout. Once he scrutinizes the process, then he verifies all the documents that are being submitted by us to the BIS department. After the scrutinizing and the verification of the documents, thirdly, he tests our samples in our in-house laboratory that is set up in our first process. If our, found, if our product is found satisfactory in our in-house requirements, then our product is sealed not all of our products, only a single product as per the grouping guidelines is sealed by an inspecting officer and that product is again sent to a government laboratory for the testing specifications. After carrying out the inspection, we can expect a BIS license in next 7 to 8 working days. Also, our license continues if in case we receive a past report of the sample that was sealed during the process. In case of failure, our license is marked as suspended for the temporary purpose till we provide a new sample to the BIS and that sample passes as per the BIS requirements. So this is all about the simplified procedure. Coming to the normal procedure, all the process remains the same apart from that in simplified procedure, we group the products and test the products before filing the application but in normal procedure, the inspecting officer seals all the products as per the grouping guidelines and then all those products are sent to the BIS approved laboratory for testing and only after the receiving of the past test report from the department, the license is granted to the manufacturer. So, as I told you that a lot of aluminium products are already being mandated under simplified procedure, then we need to apply for the BIS application only under the simplified procedure. But 
in case of foreign manufacturers the manufacturers who are having their manufacturing unit outside india they need to uh, apply for the bis license only under the normal procedure so uh, it looks like a bit of a complicated and time consuming yes, process yes, uh, but thank you for explaining the same in such detail so my next question to you is about the applicability of bis so many of the times we receive query from people asking that is bis applicable on importers bis license under foreign manufacturer certification scheme yes the bis is a manufacturer concern license and is issued only to a manufacturer hence as per your question bis is not implemented on importers but in case of imports the foreign manufacturer having its foreign manufacturing unit needs to secure the bis license before its sales to the indian market so as i have understood you mean to say that in case of import the importer does not require the bis license okay. instead the foreign manufacturer uh, requires the bis license under foreign manufacturer certification Sorry, scheme fmcs yes you are absolutely correct so with that uh, we all understand how the bis certification works its relevance and the process involved so now our viewers want to know what all types of expenses are needed for the certification procedure so can you please explain that to so dimpy uh, to conclude the expenses we can divide the expenses in three phases first is the government fees second is the lab testing charges and lastly we can conclude as the advisory or miscellaneous expenses so talking about government fees there would be a fixed expense of rupees 9000 which includes 1000 of application fee 1000 of annual fees and 7000 of inspection charges apart from this 9000 there is a minimum marking fee involved which varies from product to product coming to the testing charges again these testing charges vary from product to product and even from lab to lab also these testing charges would be multiplied as per the number of series that we made under the uh, grouping guidelines as per the grouping guidelines so these charges would be multiplied and in other charges we can include the advisory or consultation charges as well as the miscellaneous expenses that would be indulged during the process also in case of foreign manufacturers there would be an additional 10000 usd of bank guarantee that needs to be submitted to bis before the grant of license so uh, i think you've done an excellent job in explaining the, the expenses in general uh, moreover if any manufacturer either willingly or unwillingly fails to comply with the bis within due time uh, will that be considered as a prohibition so as per clause 5 of the general document on qco implementation issued by bis it clearly states that after the date of commencement of the qco no person shall manufacture distribute sell lease hire store or even exhibit for sale products covered under the qcos without a bis mark and doing this would again be a punishable offence So this brings us to the end of the video. I would like to extend my gratitude to Mr. Atul Agarwal for an amazing in-depth talk on uh, BIS aluminium products from top to bottom. Uh, and finally, to all the manufacturers who are ready for licensing and have any further queries or need a specific quotation for the same, uh, can reach us through the number and email ID displayed on the screen. Moreover, you can also visit our website www.globalsolution.co.in to get an overview on other services that we provide. Thank you.